Welcome back to Scientific Curiosity. Today I am going to start a new series known as Decrypted. Now what is this series all about? Every week or two I am going to take a book and I am going to unlock it for you. I am going to take out the meaning, the essence of each of the chapters, each of the sections and I am going to explain it to you. So it's like the entire book in a nutshell. So starting with that, the first book we will be looking at for maybe this week and the next is this one. Richard P. Feynman's QED, The Strange Theory of Light and Matter. Now this book is a classic. So I don't want to actually spoil it for you. So if you don't want me to spoil it for you, then you can go ahead and buy this one. This you won't regret it. It's way too brilliant for you to regret it. Feynman is a beautiful explainer and he does the job so well at telling you about all the nitty gritties of the theory he helped develop. So this is the point, the point of no return, the event horizon for this video. Spoiler alerts and see you soon. Okay, so first of all, let's talk a bit about Richard Feynman. Now Richard Feynman was one of the most influential physicists of the 20th century, ask anybody. But not only that, he was also a genius teacher. He used to have a chart, he used to explain everything so intuitively. Even the counterintuitive things like quantum electrodynamics and quantum field theory, they are hard, they have a lot of maths. But still, just by using a few diagrams, he was able to teach everybody, inspire everybody about the entire field that is considered to be one of the most hardest in the entire of physics. So Feynman was a very lucid and brilliant explainer, that is one thing. But he also was a genius. He helped develop quantum electrodynamics and it describes everything except for maybe the nucleus and gravitational forces, it explains everything. If you take this pencil, there are atoms in this pencil and what's holding the atoms together? The electromagnetic force. Quantum electrodynamics is a theory which describes the electromagnetic force as an interaction between various charged particles like electrons and protons and photons. Now what are photons? Photons are the particles of light. They communicate the electromagnetic force between any two charged particles. So QED is all about that and Feynman was a pioneer in it. So it's always a pleasure to hear things out from the pioneer of a particular field. So let's get started. For today, we will be taking a little look at the introduction. So there are four sections in this book. The first one is the introduction, which is really long for an introduction because these are first lectures. This book was developed out of a lecture series that Feynman gave, first in New Zealand because he says it was far away from home, so if you fail, it will not be so much humiliating. And then they were given in the United States. So this book is made up of the lectures. What he told in the lectures, that is the content of the book. So first you have an introduction which is lecture 1. Then you have something about photons, the particles of light. That was lecture 2 and chapter 2 of this book. Then we come to electrons and their interactions. And finally some loose ends where he develops new contributions in quantum field theory. Okay, so let's get started, really. For today, a brief part of the introduction. So Feynman dedicates this book to Alex Mortimer, who was probably a friend, and he used to explain physics to her. But the only field that he wasn't able to explain, quantum theory. Because quantum theory is so hard. You just have to trust me. It's really hard and really weird. That's the thing that gets to the people most. It's weird. So let's see what Feynman has to say. So in the introduction, lecture one, Feynman, the naturally charming explainer he is, starts the story back at the point of Sir Isaac Newton. So he says, before Newton, there were many phenomena, heat, sound, motion, gravity, all of them. And all of them were considered to be different from each other. Then Isaac Newton came along and Isaac Newton developed a basic theory, his laws of motion and he published the Principia. We will get to the Principia in another 
volume of this series but for now it revolutionized physics as we know it now sound was no longer something distant and mysterious it was just the motion of atoms vibrating around in the air and heat gravity friction motion velocity kinematics dynamics everything was unified under a pretty small set of rules and this was the birth of classical physics now classical physics works pretty well there was also another aspect to classical physics you know all of this works to well heat motion but there was something else that was left undiscovered by newton electricity and magnetism now of course newton did not develop these but still they were included in, in classical physics because james clerk maxwell another one of the geniuses and whom we will get to due time developed a theory of electromagnetism a precursor to quantum electrodynamics but there was another problem when you apply newton's laws and the classical electromagnetism basically all of classical mechanics to the atom to the tiny scales of the atom now how small is the atom it's mind blowingly small if you take your fingertip and you blow it up to the size of this room and you fill it with grains of sand then no grains of rice rice would be more like it so if you take that rice now that rice would be representing a cell if you blow that cell up to the size of this room and fill in rice grains of rice again then those would be the proteins we are still not down to the atom level now in the gap between those grains of rice the proteins if you fill in sand or salt or something like that then the size of the salt that's how small the atom is so when you apply classical mechanics and electro uh, electromagnetism and all of that to the atom it failed it failed miserably it was a mess so we developed another theory for it quantum mechanics was developed to explain everything about the atom the nucleus the electrons how it interacted and how it makes up everything we see but quantum mechanics was weird we had to agree on that now there was also something else quantum mechanics was all fine and good but there was still one fact that was left undiscovered the interaction between matter and light now look around you light is all over you you can see me because of light i can i can take this pencil and see the pencil because of light light is reflecting off it entering my eyes and that is why this pencil i can see it with all its colors i can see this desk, desktop of mine the wonderful photo of mount fuji with all of its colors just because of light so this was a pretty important field you may say so it was rather given a horrible name quantum electrodynamics and feynman agrees to it but there was one problem when you try to calculate something you could get an approximate answer very well but try to add some more terms to it to make it to refine it to get a better answer and the answer be up to infinity just it was like the laws were giving up and saying okay do whatever you want i'm blowing up to infinity i don't care so there was one value one particular value of how an electron interacts with the magnetic field i will get to that later in other videos but for now you have to know that it was around 1.00118 that was the measured value and quantum electrodynamics which was first developed in around 1928 by paul dirac another one of the geniuses physics is has no lack of geniuses in its history record so paul dirac developed quantum electrodynamics he was the first one to develop a quantum field theory now what was so new about this theory it incorporated relativity and quantum mechanics special relativity to be more specific now these were taught to be they were taught to be not compatible at all but dirac did it and doing so he stumbled upon quantum electrodynamics but there was this problem it blew up to infinity when you tried to calculate the answer to get a better value to refine it so around 1948 it was experimentally measured that the value of the constant that talked about was 1.00118 so 
It was around this time that Schwinger, Tomonaga and Feynman himself developed a, a few new techniques to calculate the answers of basically every type of situation that you would encounter in real life. So Schwinger calculated his part, he got 1.0016 but it was still a rough number of calculations, too many calculations. What Feynman did was he eased it up. He just broke it down to a few diagrams and that was it. Each part of the diagram, each component relates to one mathematical expression. So if you make a diagram indicating how a situation would be like, we will get to that eventually, then you could basically get the solution just by adding the mathematical terms corresponding to each of the components. And that was brilliant. And that is why they got a Nobel Prize for their work too. So now, let's actually delve deep and see what exactly quantum electrodynamics say.